What's up everybody? In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to change. All right? So first off, you've got to understand you cannot change who you are. There's nothing you can do to change the way you already are. You can't change the past, but you can change who you become. You can't do anything to change anything you've done already, but you can change your actions now to shape the person that you become in the future. And that's the key to change, is being able to understand that you cannot change who you are in this moment. To truly change, you must change your actions, and then over time, you can change who you become. Now, in order to change anything, you need to understand three things. You gotta understand who you think you are, who you actually are, and who you want to be. Before you can progress towards anything, you must be able to understand that these three things are different than each other. You may think that who you are and who you think you are are the same, but they are never the same. It is necessary for them to be as close to each other as possible so that you can progress towards who you want to be. But you must be able to admit that who you are is something you can never actually know. You can only think you know who you are. And these two things are actually separate. You'll think you're one way, but then one person will perceive you as another way, and another person will perceive you as the opposite. You can only think you know who you are. You can't actually know who you are. But let's say that you, you think you know who you are, and you've accepted that, and these two things are pretty close to each other, then you can progress towards who you want to be. But if these two things are not close to each other, if you think that you are this person all the way over here, and you are the person you want to be, but then in reality, this is who you are, you're gonna have problems. And you're gonna have problems with people around you as well, because this indicates that you are not actually who you think you are, but you tell yourself lies or whatever that make you think that that's who you are. So once you understand that these three things are separate, you don't have to understand their relevance yet, then you can understand how do we progress? And basically every single thing you do in your life is doing one of two things. It is either taking you towards your best self, or it's taking you towards your worst self. Every single thing you do, including watching this video, going to bed, every word, every action, everything that you do except your thoughts are either making a life that is your best self or taking you towards a life that is your worst self. And so if we combine this concept with these three things from earlier, who we want to be, who we think we are, and who we actually are, then we can start to understand why people fail to live their best lives. Most of us are like this. We want to be our best self. So that's over here, our best self. But we think we are our worst selves. And in reality, we are somewhere in the middle. This is the typical insecure mindset. You're aware that you want to be something you're not. You want to be better. You want to be your best self. Almost everybody has that. But people have so many insecurities that they think that they're horrible. And unfortunately, in order to progress towards the ideal situation where you understand who you are and you work with yourself to go towards who you want to be, you have to have who you think you are and who you are. These have to be pretty similar. Like I said, you can never actually have them be identical, but in order to really take control of your life and to improve regularly, you need to have these close to each other. So then you can start 
to head towards the person that you want to be. Now, this is all quite tricky to actually do in reality because everything that you do is causing something called resentment to self. In a perfect world, if you were your best person, the best you could possibly be, then none of the things that you would do would cause resentment to self. However, none of us come into the world this way. And it's true that we can exist in times where we're at our best, but overall, it's not that simple. Everything we do is building some level of resentment to self. If you have high resentment to self, then you are going to head towards your worst self. You are going to notice that you have expectations of who you want to be, and they are not who you are, not even who you think you are, and so you progress to your worst self. In order to become your best self, you have to have a very low resentment towards yourself. This means doing things that you do not regret. But in order to do this, you must fully understand that everything you do has the potential to build this resentment towards yourself. And you must avoid doing things that cause this to grow whenever possible. And that is what this recipe is. Everybody has a recipe of actions that they can perform that creates their best self. Today, there are things that you can do that will progress you directly towards the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. However, that recipe is unique to you. Whatever creates your best self isn't the same for what creates my best self or another person's. And so in order to build your recipe, you have to be able to know what things you do that cause resentment to self and what things you do that don't. And you have to build a list of all the things that you can do that don't cause resentment to self. And that's how you learn this recipe. You have to try as many different things as possible. You have to open yourself to different people, different cultures, and different perspectives so that you can gain so many experiences that you know your recipe because you know what causes you to resent yourself and you refrain from doing those things because you have created a day that is filled with everything that you need to not resent yourself. Once you have learned the recipe, or even as you're learning it, you're gonna deal with the common problem and that's gonna be your motivation. Let's say you don't know what your recipe is. You don't know these things that you can do every single day to make you the best you that you can be. You have to learn them. You have to put effort into that. You have to motivate yourself. You have to be able to pursue these things so that you can learn your recipe, so that you can lower your resentment to self, so that you can become your best self. And being able to consistently motivate yourself to be able to learn your recipe, that's really, really tricky. So how do we motivate ourselves? How do we do this? Because before we can even get to the point where we know our recipe, we have to learn what it is. And a lot of people will die before they ever learn all the things that they can do to make themselves the best that they can be. So how do you motivate yourself? to be able to learn these things. And once you learn them, how do you motivate yourself to be able to apply these things? 
You have two options in this life. You can stress yourself or you can nurture yourself. Anytime you're trying to motivate, you're gonna do one of these two things. Stress is the best way to temporarily grow. In the short term, stress is more effective than nurturing yourself. If you look at these graphs, you can see there's a Y and an X. In this case, the Y axis is results. The X is time spent. So you can see that in the short term, you get more results out of less time spent if you stress yourself out. So imagine that you're trying to apply to school. You want to get into college. The best thing to do here is stress yourself out into actually doing the application so you get accepted because it's a short-term specific goal. However, when you're talking about long-term goals, the table flips. It becomes ineffective to stress yourself out to accomplish something because stress is linear progress, whereas nurturing yourself is exponential progress. So in the long run, it's always better to nurture yourself than it is to stress yourself. But in the short term, it's always better to stress yourself than it is to nurture yourself. Let's talk a bit about nurturing so that you guys can understand what it means because almost everybody just uses stress. We have a little bit of nurturing components, but we don't adopt it as a way to get things done. We almost all just use stress. And that's because most of us are focused and obsessed with progress in the short term. Stress is absolutely more useful to get results in the short term. But life is a long-term process. And when you nurture something, in the beginning, it often grows quite slowly. You have to give it everything that it needs to be at its best. That takes a long time. And that's why the results in the beginning of nurturing are very slow. But when done properly, the results of nurturing yourself in the long run are exponential. A person who stresses themselves out ultimately will always just burn out. They'll give up or they will achieve what they want, but find that they don't feel satisfied. They want more, always, always. It's never enough. But a person who nurtures themselves, they understand themselves so fully that they are able to put themselves in the best possible environment for them to perform at their maximum capabilities. They have no fear of not performing because they're not stressing themselves out. They are placing themselves in an environment where they are at their best and they actively enjoy the process that gets the results. And because they enjoy it, because they love it, they do it consistently, regularly, and for a long period of time. And that creates far more results than stress ever can. So you must be very careful with how you motivate yourself. Do you stress yourself out and tell yourself, you have to do this, do this, otherwise you will not get to what you want? Do, are you doing that to yourself? Are you judging yourself? Or are you accepting yourself as who you are and placing yourself in environments that are best for your development? Once you understand all this, you're pretty much there because there's only one more lesson for you. And that lesson regards other people. Because just like yourself, you cannot change other people. But you can inspire people to change who they become. However, as a general rule, you shouldn't waste your time thinking about what other people can do better. Because the reality is every single time 
you have a thought about another person and what they need to do to fix a problem or improve their lives, that is effort and energy you are wasting because really you should think about what you should do to fix your problems and fix your lives. It is not your business to tell other people what they need to do because ultimately it's on them, it's not on you. Only they can know what they need to do. And just like that, only you can know what you need to do to change your life. You cannot change other people and you cannot expect that they will change. You can only change yourself and hope that in that process, you inspire them to change who they become. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. You are also welcome to book time with me. If you want to talk about anything, it costs $20 per 30 minute session, or it's completely free if you let me record it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Ciao.